Hey there, Dan Gastu here. In today's video, we're gonna be taking the Evinrude 150 out on the water for its first sea trials. First thing I'm gonna do though is swap out the spark plugs. Um, I had some sort of NGK equivalent. On here you can see the equivalent numbers actually, the ones I've got in there at the moment, but I have it on good authority that we're much better off running these original champion plugs. So I'm gonna pop these in now. And then after that, we're just gonna set the carburetors to their default factory mixtures, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, they're all swapped over and tightened up now. So we'll go and have a look at those carburetor mixture screws. Here in the fuel system section, it says that the initial low speed setting is five and three quarter turns. To get to the carburetor mixture screws, we're just going to take off the air box here, which is held on by these four elastic straps. Two hoses also go into it, one here and then one down here. The mixture screws on this are an Allen key, and this one looks like it's 9 64ths, whatever that is. So I've just wound the screw all the way in gently. As soon as it starts to seat, stop it, don't force it and then I'll wind it out five and three quarter turns. Two, three, four, five, and then three quarters. So I'll do that for all of these. All right, let's fire it up again now and see what it sounds like this time with the new spark plugs, the correct spark plugs, and all the carburetors set to the factory default for the idle mixture. Certainly no quieter. All right, let's take it down to the boat ramp. So the break-in procedure says is first 10 minutes fast idle essentially, so we're just gonna putt around for a bit. But what I might do is get Doran, the owner, on the, on the helm, and I'm just gonna take a few temperature readings and things just to make sure it's, it's all tracking well. So we're going to putt around slowly for a while. The engine's still sitting at around 60 degrees Celsius, so it's still pretty cold. We've got a good tail fire, which is good. So I think with a decent tail fire and the temperature, the head temperature staying low, I don't think we've got any cooling issues. We've gone through that first phase of the first 10 minutes of just running around at a fast idle. We're now into the second phase, which is the next 50 minutes, running it at between idle and a maximum of 3,500 revs, but alternating between different rev ranges. At the moment, we're running at about three and a half. The hull doesn't really like its rev range, but it's not really about that. It's about getting the motor running properly. Just marking the oil level so that we can get a sense of whether the VRO unit is actually using oil. So we've got pre-mixed fuel in the tank as well, but I just want to make sure that that oil level is actually dropping and that oil is being picked up by the pump. So I gave the screwdriver a bit of a clean, then dipped it in the tank, using it as a bit of a dipstick to measure how much is in there. So I've got a mark of how much oil is in there now, and we'll see how it goes after a bit of running. <laughs> and carve Paul Keating's nose in it, mm. Bobby Hall. 
Oh, I'm thinking more of... We could call it Lightning now. Did you see the size of the brim I caught? <laughs> was it was that big? Jeez. Oh, look at that. That looks really cool on this. Man. That looks like it's been recently serviced. Oh, yeah. Do buy one, though. Look how she parks ah. the boat. Didn't do the gearbox then. Oh, All outboards do that, don't they? Bee is so good. You should see the glow through the screen here. It's so nice. Hey, right, Arnie. So what are these Arnold's? Prawn goyas? Goyas or whatever, I don't know, it's Japanese. Are you using them for fishing? No, we're about to eat those. Oh, okay. With Sorry. dumpling, um, we're going to use those. Homemade um, local mussels. Can you put the video across them? Is this, are those local mussels? Local mussels. What do you think with them? Um, we could eat them. Or are you going to put them in the fish? It's bloody dark out here now. I think I just lost my prawn again. It took a while for you to lose your prawn though, didn't it, Stu? <laughs> well, you know, 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm joking, it was really 12. <laughs> <laughs> Some monster pedals. <laughs> okay, fisherman's friends. Hey, there's some munchies here, guys. Thanks, Aunt. Oh. He's a bit hooked. Oh, there we go. Hang on. <laughs> it's huge. It is a monster. Yeah. Mind you, you've got very big hands, Jay. Thank you. The, <laughs> the police are coming. <laughs> <laughs> the, poli the fish police. We well, swam away. That's all right. No, he didn't. He just dived. He's not floating. So, thanks for watching. I know we didn't go through a lot of details on this motor, uh, on tuning and that kind of thing. It's just really tricky on the water doing this kind of stuff without a tripod and all that sort of thing. But, so far, it's running quite nicely. Getting close now to having finished um, the first hour of running. So the instructions for this next eight hour phase say essentially give it full throttle, get it up on the plane, then back it off and let it stay on the plane. Um, but don't do any sort of extended full throttle running at all. I'm pretty keen to see this boat through its first sort of 10 hours of running because the owner's intention is actually to sell this boat. So I just want to be 100% sure it's fully running, it's all good to go before it goes on the market. So for now, I think we'll just cruise around for a bit, uh, enjoy the blue sky for a change, we've had plenty of rain lately. And then uh, once we get it back, we'll try and do a bit of a final tune up, show you over the whole boat, and then uh, take a bite. That hour or so of running's pretty much emptied this 20 litre tank we put externally. So I'll check the main tanks for water again, and then we'll hook those up for future runs, I'd say. So there she is in the water. It sits quite nicely. Rides quite nice on the plane, doesn't like to go half speed, but not many boats do. There's quite a good carb tuning procedure in the manual for this one. So next time we're on the water, I think we'll head out and I'll bring a tripod and everything and we'll go through that procedure so you can see how that's done as well. All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, next time we see this boat, I think we'll pick up with that carb tuning process just to show you how to go through that. Um, but in the meantime, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.